everyone welcome to the lecture series on kinematic analysis of mechanisms graphical methods 2 in today's lecture we are going to discuss basics of Pirouli's component of acceleration the scope of this lecture is to identify the presence of Pirouli's component of acceleration in a mechanism to determine magnitude and direction of Pirouli's component of acceleration and to add the Corollis acceleration vector in acceleration diagram in relative acceleration analysis method. So we are not going into any mathematical derivations or mathematical proof for Corollis acceleration. We will only derive some conclusions so that they will help us to plot the acceleration vectors inclu uh, including Corollis component in relative velocity and acceleration analysis method so here we go consider a link op pivoted at point o now distance of p from o is fixed it is constant since p is not moving relative to o along the length of the link now when link rotates about pivot point o with some angular velocity omega Point P will also rotate about O in circular path and it will have a linear tangential velocity which is equals to radius of rotation OP into its angular velocity and we know that direction of this linear tangential velocity is perpendicular to radius of rotation OP. This is when distance between OP is fixed. Now in case 2 consider link pivoted at point O and slider p is sliding along the length of the link which is pivoted at point o now when the slider slides on the link its distance relative to point o will change so in this case distance op is varying while the link is rotating now when the link rotates with some angular velocity omega about point o point P that is slider or point P on the slider will rotate about O in circular motion so it will have linear tangential velocity which is equals to radius of rotation OP into its angular velocity and this is perpendicular to radius of rotation OP now along with this slider P slides along the length of this link so it will have some sliding velocity which is indicated by velocity vector v as p q sliding velocity of p relative to q so when distance of p from o is fixed the only velocity component present is tangential velocity v p o and when the distance of p from o is changing while the link is rotating there are two velocity components represented by VPO and VSPO linear tangential velocity VPO and sliding velocity VSPO now what about the accelerations for OP constant we know that P will have a linear tangential velocity perpendicular to the radius of rotation OP and magnitude of radius of rotation OP into its angular velocity under this condition point P will have two components of acceleration first is centripetal component of acceleration which is equals to V square upon radius of rotation OP and it is acting parallel to the radius of rotation OP and directed towards the center of rotation O this acceleration component accounts for change in direction of this linear tangential velocity now if the link is rotating with non-uniform speed there will be one more component of acceleration called as tangential component of acceleration indicated by FTPO magnitude of FTPO is equals to radius of rotation OP into its angular acceleration and direction of this acceleration vector is perpendicular to radius of rotation OP so when distance between rotating particle P and the center of rotation O is fixed the point P will have one linear tangential velocity and two components of acceleration 
centripetal or radial and tangential accelerations. Now the components of acceleration when distance OP is varying. <coughs> now we have seen that when distance of P from O is varying, it will have two velocity components. One is <coughs> linear tangential velocity when P rotates about O and another is sliding velocity of P on the link. Now for rotation of P about O, it will have two components of acceleration. First is centripetal component which is parallel to the link and second is tangential component if the link is rotating with non-uniform speed. So FCPO centripetal acceleration and FTPO is tangential acceleration of point P when it rotates about O. Now point P also slides on this link so it will have a sliding acceleration which is parallel to the line of stroke of this piston that is it is parallel to the length of the link so it will have one more acceleration fs p but this sliding velocity of p is not pure sliding because while the slider slides on this link the slider is also rotating. <coughs> so, under such conditions, when sliding velocity vector rotates with the link or when the sliding velocity vector VSPO rotates or changes its direction, there will be one more component of acceleration that is called as Coriolis component of acceleration. So, this slider which is sliding and rotating will have Coriolis component of acceleration which is indicated by FCR. So FCR Coriolis component of acceleration of point P. This component of acceleration is always perpendicular to the sliding velocity vector VSPO or sliding acceleration vector FSP or it is perpendicular to the radius of rotation OP. Now this is the comparison of accelerations. The first case, when the distance OP is fixed, we have two components of accelerations, centripetal and tangential. And for OP is varying, when the distance OP is changing, the point P will have four components of accelerations, centripetal, tangential, for rotation of P, and sliding and Coriolis acceleration for rotation as well as sliding of P. So, when the distance of P is changing with respect to point O or with respect to center of rotation O, it will have four components of accelerations. Now, <coughs> to simplify the representations of these accelerations, when we encounter such problems, what we do? We assume any point Q on the rotating link such that the point Q lies exactly below point P on the slider. I will repeat this, point P lies on the slider. So point P represents slider. Point Q lies exactly below the point P but on the rotating link. So point Q represents slider on the rotating link. So now when the link rotates, it will have Two components of accelerations for Q. When link rotates about O, point Q will rotate about O in circular path, so it will have centripetal component of accelerations, which is indicated by FCQO, centripetal acceleration of Q relative to O, and tangential acceleration of Q relative to O if the link is rotating with non uniform speed. So these are the accelerations of point Q when it rotates about O. Now for point P which is sliding along the length of this link it will have sliding acceleration FSPQ. Sliding acceleration of P relative to Q and Coriolis acceleration of P relative to Q. So we have defined the acceleration of P relative to O when it rotates with respect to O using point Q and acceleration of slider using point P. 
So now accelerations of point Q. There are two points here, point P on the slider and point Q on the rotating link. So we will identify the accelerations of both these points. Accelerations of point Q, first is centripetal or radial acceleration. When the link rotates, Q will rotate about O in circular path. So it will have two components of acceleration. First one is centripetal acceleration, FCQO. Another is tangential acceleration, FTQO, which is perpendicular to the radius of link. So when Q rotates about O, it has two components of acceleration, centripetal or radial, which is parallel to the radius of rotation OP, and tangential acceleration, which is perpendicular to the radius of rotation OQ. Hence, the total acceleration of Q relative to O is the vector sum of these two components, centripetal component FCQO and tangential component FTQO. Next, <coughs> accelerations of point P. First of all, P will have a sliding acceleration since P slides relative to Q. The direction of the sliding acceleration is always parallel to the line of stroke, like this. FSPQ, sliding acceleration of P relative to Q is parallel to the line of stroke of slider. Another is Coriolis component of acceleration whose magnitude is equal to 2 into the product of sliding velocity and angular velocity of the link and its direction is perpendicular to sliding velocity vector and it will point in the direction of angular velocity. To find out the direction of Coriolis component of acceleration of P relative to Q, we will assume that the slider P is moving in upward direction so its velocity vector will point in upward direction. What we do now, we take the velocity vector, we'll rotate this velocity vector in the direction of rotation of the link by 90 degrees to get the direction of its Coriolis component of acceleration. So FCR PQ is obtained by rotating the vector Vs by 90 degrees in the direction of omega. So FCR PQ is perpendicular to the line of stroke of the slider and it will point in the direction of angular velocity. So FCR PQ, Coriolis acceleration of P relative to Q is equals to 2 times the Vs PQ that is sliding velocity of P relative to Q into its angular velocity. Magnitude of Coriolis acceleration and this is the direction of Coriolis acceleration. Hence the total <coughs> Acceleration of P relative to Q will be the vector sum of these two components FCRPQ and FSPQ. Now, total accelerations of point P and Q. Point Q will have two components FCQO centripetal and FTQO tangential. To get the total acceleration of Q relative to O, we will add these two vectors in vector diagram. So FCQO is added to FTQO in the given directions. So we have we are adding these vectors. So we have placed the vectors tail to head. We get the resultant FQO indicated by vector OQ. So FQO is the total acceleration of Q relative to O. Vector sum of FCQO and FTQO. Now for point P which has a sliding acceleration and Coriolis acceleration. We will add both these vectors in vector polygon. FCRPQ is added to FSPQ to get the resultant FPQ. Total acceleration of P relative to Q indicated by FPQ and vector QP. So, while working with relative velocity and acceleration analysis method, if we encounter the problems involving Coriolis acceleration, you will add the corresponding vectors in this way in acceleration polygon. Total acceleration of Q relative to O and total acceleration of P relative to Q. The direction of Coriolis acceleration, we know that magnitude of Coriolis component is 2 times the sliding velocity and into its angular velocity. So let us take the first case. 
suppose that links link is rotating in clockwise sense and uh, sliding uh, velocity vector points in upward direction that is slider is moving in upward direction what we do we take the sliding velocity vector rotate this vector in the direction of angular velocity of the link through 90 degrees to get the direction of vector representing Coriolis acceleration in case 2 let us suppose that the link rotates in clockwise direction and the slider is moving downwards we take the sliding velocity vector rotate the sliding velocity vector through 90 degrees in the direction of omega to get the direction of fcr case 3 let us suppose that the link rotates in counterclockwise sense and the slider is moving in upward direction we take the sliding velocity vector we will rotate this vector in the direction of angular velocity of the link through 90 degrees to get the direction of Coriolis component FCR PQ. In the case 4, let us suppose that the link rotates in counterclockwise sense and the slider is now moving in downward direction. Take the sliding velocity vector of the slider, rotate this vector through 90 degrees in the direction of angular velocity of link to get the direction of Coriolis component of acceleration. The one thing you will note that you have to rotate the vector at its tail. You have to rotate the vectors sliding velocity vector at its tail in the direction of angular velocity of the link through 90 degrees to get the direction of Coriolis component of acceleration. Now we will draw the conclusion how to identify whether the Coriolis acceleration is present in the planar mechanism. Whenever a point is moving on a path and that path is rotating, there is an extra component of acceleration called as Coriolis acceleration. Thank you.